welcome back and in this video we're going to take a look at scripts and variables so the first thing we're going to do is add a new part so I'm going to click on part and then block and I'm just going to put it over here and I'm just going to resize a little bit I'm going to make a 4x4 four 4x4 four, four four studs part here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the part. Notice when I tapped on the part, it highlighted in the Explorer over here. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that. So I'm going to click on, right click on the part, click on rename here. And I'm just going to go ahead and name it test part. All right, now next thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to add a script to that part. So here I'm going to click on the plus button this time. And when I click on that, I've got all the options here. You might have to kind of toggle here. If that didn't come up for you, you kind of click on this button here that toggles between seeing just a limited view and all the options here. And here I'm just going to click on script and you'll notice that this message appears inside of our script called print hello world and that's the classic message that programmers put inside of programs and so that's the default code inside of our script over here. Now let's go ahead and test this out. So let's click on play and you'll notice that the output down in our output window is exactly what we would expect. We see this hello world down here because that's what's inside of our script. All right, now to stop our play testing again, just click on stop here. And again, now we're back to our script over here. Now let's go ahead and rename our script and we'll call this test part script like this. And there's a couple of reasons for doing this. Now, again, if you notice here, originally our script name was just script down here. All right now we've renamed it test part script like this. And so let's go ahead and click on play again. And you'll notice that now when the script executes, it says test part script. So again, this is useful just to see where the, let's say the message is coming from, from that part there. Just because you might have a lot of different scripts throughout your program eventually. All right, so now let's take a look at this concept of a variable. So kind of think to yourself that a variable is a storage container for values. And putting a value into a variable it's called an assignment. And the symbol that we use for that is the equal sign. So an equal sign assigns a value to a variable. So again, let's go ahead and add that into our script here. So we're going to say num equal one. And then we're going to print the value of the variable. So we're just going to say print it up. All right, now, again, let's go ahead and test that out. So when we click on the play button, again, down here, just like we expected, we have this number one there. All right, so in Lua, there are different types of variables. There are different uh, data types. And so one way to, let's say, figure out what the data type is, is by typing the commands type of. So again, let's go ahead and play this here. And let's look at the message. So here, Robux Studio Lua automatically determined that that variable that we created called num over here was of type number. 
Again, Lou is kind of doing this for us. Now, the reason why this is important is because certain operations can only be performed on certain data types. So for example, math operations can only be performed on numbers. All right, so again, num is a number. Now let's try a different data type. Let's try a data type called a string. So here I'm just going to create another new variable called what's my name. And my Roblox username is Professor Pi. And then let's go ahead and print out the value of my variable there. So print what's my name. And again, let's use that type of command. And let's put my name again. All right. So now let's go ahead and I actually forgot to stop it right there, but that's OK. I stopped it right then and there. And again, let's click on play again. And if you notice at the bottom, we've got we printed out the value of what's my name, which is Professor Pi. And also the data type there associated with Professor Pi is a string. All right, now, variable names have certain rules that you have to follow when you're creating them. So a variable name must start with a letter or an underscore. It can't contain anything other than letters, underscores, or digits. In other words, you can't use special characters like a hashtag or a single or double quotation without escaping it. And a variable name cannot contain spaces. So please don't do that when you're coding. In addition, there are certain keywords that you can't create as variable names. Otherwise, you might have some unintended consequences happen inside of your code. And those are, a short list of them are and, break, do, else, else if, and false for, function, if, in, local nil. Now, the way that you can kind of tell that this might be happening is that inside of Roblox Studio, when you're coding, for example, I just typed out the word and, and notice that it's syntax highlighted that word. Let me try another example here. So again, let's try break is another one that I mentioned. Again, notice it turned it red automatically. So if you type in a word that let's say you're thinking like, hey, I can make that a variable name, and it changes color inside of Roblox Studio, you should think to yourself that perhaps this is a reserved keyword that you can't make as a variable name. All right, so another rule about variables are that variable names are in Lua are case sensitive. So for example, you could have all of these different versions of the word num here and they would actually be different variables. And the last thing I want to show you here in this video are comments. So comments are readable by you, but ignored by Roblox Studio. And so they're useful in some instances because you can kind of give a message to yourself or to your future self or a person who's reading your code. And in Lua, comment is a hyphen hyphen. So for example, again, I just say something like this is a comment to myself. And again, in order to test it out, you have to click on stop, clicking on play again. Notice there was no output down here when I ran my code. And again, that's because Lua ignores anything to the right of the hyphen hyphen over there. Now, a longer comment would look something like this. So it's the hyphen hyphen with a open square bracket, open square bracket. And then you can kind of type in a longer message. And again, you end it with a hyphen hyphen like that. 
And again, Roblox Studio Lua is going to ignore this message over here. So let's go ahead and play that. And again, you'll notice that message does not appear at the bottom over here. And again, that's because you commented out. All right, I hope that helps, and I'll see you in the next video.